Good morning and welcome to my Father's place. The Lord has been bringing before my very eyes many who have shattered hearts, hearts broken in pieces. And today he wants to heal because he is, as the title of my message says, a healer of hearts, but I must pray first before I begin. Father, I know I can do nothing apart from you and your son, and that I must have that vital connection with you, and I thank you for making it so. Speak through me, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, that hearts may be healed today that they may even see the possibility that they may be healed. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Healer of hearts. For some of you who know the Bible, this is a familiar scripture, but I'm speaking to a very specific part of it this time. You see, I really can't speak to those with broken hearts unless you know that mine was and is no longer because of Christ. Mine was broken. It is no longer broken. And I will be incorporating the testimony of my brokenness in the prayer that it might speak to you so that you could see these aren't just words on a page, but they are what God wants to do in you. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners. Glory to God to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. First, I must say, the purpose for him healing my heart was so that he would be glorified because I go about saying he is a healer of hearts and I know because he healed mine. I know because he healed mine. I was very broken. My situation in 1976 was this. I was very alone. I was very afraid. I was abused. I was desperate. I was confused. I was addicted to drugs. Some of you may be addicted to alcohol. Some of you may have other kinds of addictions that don't involve putting a substance into yourself to try to kill the pain that you feel. For me, it was putting a substance in to try to kill the pain. Thank you, Jesus. My identity was that I was a member of the Broken Hearts Club. That's who I was, a broken-hearted person. That was my whole identity. Everything that I had been before I was broken was no longer a part of me, and all I had was my brokenness. That was all I had to hang on to. It was all I could think about. I was broken. I had been beaten by my first husband to the point where I bled from inside myself. And before that, he had abused me psychologically to the point where I felt I was entirely useless. 
and nothing. My life was going from one high to the next because to deal with reality was a very hard thing. And I didn't want to go there. So I just kept getting high. So I didn't have to deal with the reality that was in front of me. That I had made a very grave error that I had married a man who became, once again, and had been before, a drug dealer. And I began to do the drugs he dealt. And my mind became very scrambled and confused, and I didn't know what to do when I was down, when I was somewhat sober, because with drugs it takes a long time to really have everything leave you and so there I was my heart was shattered it says here it says here and I have experienced and I tell you that it's the truth and I tell you that he can do it in you he has sent me to bring good news to the afflicted from verse 1 good news to the afflicted Good news to the humble. Good news to those who have been brought low. Good news. Bind up the brokenhearted. That is to heal, not just to put a Band-Aid on, but to completely heal a broken heart, a shattered heart, a heart in pieces, literally, in Hebrew, a heart in pieces. My heart was in pieces. To proclaim liberty to captives. Liberty. Do you know what that is? It is a sudden going forth. Out of chains. A sudden going forth. And it is a spontaneous, spontaneous outflow. A spontaneous outflow. Ah, life comes in and flows out. This is the liberty that he gives. Because I was dead inside. And he has made me alive. I can speak this from experience. In the hopes that you might hear. And that somehow the Holy Spirit would show you that it's true. I can't even begin to tell you the things I did that were evil while I was in this terrible state. I can't tell you that I ever felt God, sensed God, or any other thing through it. I was totally separated from him. Until this one night, after my first husband beat me to the point where I bled from inside of me, I went back to my apartment that we had together, and I wept, and I called my parents, and I asked them if I could come home. I was afraid for my life. He had murdered others. I thought he would murder me. So they brought me. My father came. A 20-minute trip he made in 10. Do you think he was eager for me to be set free? Oh, yeah. And I'd been home for about a week, and I was very, very spaced out from all the drugs I'd been on and from suddenly not doing anything and not associating with anyone that I had associated with. I cut myself off from them immediately. I knew I had to separate myself from the life I had lived because it had destroyed me. 
my heart bled great sadness as my body bled physically. So I was lying there in bed one night and I was obsessing and reliving and replaying and obsessing and reliving and replaying and obsessing and reliving and replaying. Do you know what I am saying? And I cried out in the night. I had never prayed to God. My parents had forced me to go to church when I was a kid. I had never prayed except when I was praying the Lord's Prayer or some other prayer that the church was doing as a whole. I cried out in the night, in the middle of the night, and I said, God, I don't have the strength for this. And I heard in my heart, just as if he had spoken aloud, you have my strength. And I knew in that moment that was God speaking to me who had shunned him and rejected him and written him off. Oh, how merciful he is. And so I went to sleep. And I woke up the next morning and my muddled head was clear and my mind was whole and my personality, which had been buried under the drugs and under the abuse and under this whole pile of trash, my personality emerged again. And I was like I had been before all of that happened. Moment of time, next morning, woke up, there I was. I had no desire for drugs, no desire. He had removed from my broken heart, my shattered heart, two and a half years worth of scar tissue so that we could get down to where the hurt really was. Now, scar tissue itself is painful, but it was covering up where the hurt really was. So my mind was restored. And I had no craving for drugs. And I was free. But I never gave a thought until years later to that encounter in the middle of the night. So I just went on and started planning my future, knowing that it was all right for me to divorce my first husband. Somehow, I knew that was all right. My brother later testified when we were getting divorce clearance from the Free Methodist Church to become pastors. My brother later testified that he knew that had I stayed with my first husband, I would be dead. But here I was, starting a new life. So I went back to school to get a degree at the local university. And I met Jeff, and we fell in love. But I I ignored God. You see, he wasn't quite true with his work on my heart. And I knew that when I was going out with Jeff, and I didn't trust him, and I expected him to be toward me, like my first husband was. I was always anticipating that this nice guy 
was going to go from Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde, and I was going to have to deal with all that pain all over again. I had not come to the Lord and allowed him to heal everything. That's why I still had this lack of trust. And I didn't cease from harassing Jeff about it until one time he said to me, I am not Tim. I was dumbstruck. I was, it was like somebody had put a knife in my chest to, to, just to wake me up to the fact he isn't. He was the exact opposite of Tim. He was gentle and kind and loving and, and just very easy to be with, not moody or anything like that. It was so different. I couldn't believe it. It couldn't possibly be true. He's going he's gonna to screw around behind my back. He's going to do something behind my back. He's going to. He's going to. But when he said that to me, I said, oh, man, I've got to reset everything. So I reset my mind. I said, I got to do an attitude correction. I didn't know the Lord. This was what I thought. I got to do an attitude correction. And I was able eventually to trust him. And I didn't come at him expecting him to be untrue and to use me instead of loving me. It took a whole year, because he had a shattered heart too, took a whole year for us to get the courage up to say, I love you. We were both damaged goods. But we did say, I love you. And we did find that we were so suited to each other that it would be a good and loving marriage. And my heart was still not completely healed. Beloved, he has come to do that, but we have to stay with him for him to do it. And I didn't, I went away. Did my life for 18 years. So I was stricken with MS. And my whole dream career, executive management in the VA, went down the tubes. And there I was. You've heard the story before. A new pastor came to town, gets up in the pulpit, says, I've had a vision, and in it, Sue is healed. And he gives a book out to everyone on the church board. Tommy Tenney's The God Chasers. And he says, I could have written this book. And as I read it, it put such a hunger in my heart just to know him that I began to pray, oh, Lord, I want to know you that way. We had both come to salvation. But the Lord was about to show me my heart still had not been fully healed. So I started meeting with the pastor, and he said, before I can even meet with you, Sue, there are two things you need to do. I'll give them to you one at a time. First, I want you to go to God and ask you if you're right with him. I was on the church board. I was saved. I'm kind of offended by that. What do you mean am I right. I didn't say that, but I was thinking that. What do you mean am I right? I'm saved and I'm a member of the church board. My goodness. I'm right. 
but I couldn't argue with the Holy Spirit who was speaking through my pastor. So I went that night and I asked the Lord if I was right with him and I got no answer. So I told my pastor the next day I prayed and I got no answer, I must be right. So he said, okay, on to the second thing. And here's where the rubber hits the road, folks. Do you have any unforgiveness in your heart? Is there anyone you are holding a grudge against? And immediately the Holy Spirit convicted me just as he's convicting you right now that there is someone in your life you have not forgiven. And I knew it in a moment. And I knew that was separating me from God because that was sin. He can't forgive you unless you forgive. So, I went to the Lord that night and I said, this is standing between you and me and I want to know you. It had nothing to do with physically healing me of MS at this point. I wanted to know him and I knew this was in the way. And so I asked him to take the unforgiveness in my heart toward my first husband. It was still there. The Holy Spirit brought it right to mind as soon as the pastor asked that question. Let him convict you because it's going to lead to healing. Just as it did for me. He is so kind. He is so kind. A bruised reed he won't break. A smoldering wick he won't snuff out. He is gentle with those who have shattered hearts. So I went to him and I prayed and I said, this stands between us. Take it, Lord, I can't. You can't take whatever is in you that has broken your heart. You can't take it. Only he can. You can try. You can go to counseling. You can do all those things, but only God can heal you. He is a healer of hearts. And he will do it. And he is the only one who can do a thorough job. Wait for him to do it. Do not go away from him. Do not go and do your life when you feel pretty well. Because he was about to complete the work that he had started way back in the middle of the night when I said, God, I don't have the strength. Oh, I tell you, he is good, and he will do it. It says he will do it. He will do it. He came to do it. And I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, so I can tell you, so I can proclaim to you this very good news that he will do it that you do not have to remain in your woundedness. You don't have to remain a member of that club. Now it's scary, I know, because when I was wounded, all I knew was my woundedness. That was my identity. I was a member of the Wounded Club. When I had MS, that was my identity. I was an MSer. But God is able to give you a whole new life, a whole new identity in Him as His child, and fill you with His Holy Spirit to complete the work. And your heart will be healed. Not only will you be able to forgive those from the past, but anyone who comes, you'll be able to forgive. You'll be able to pray for those who spitefully use you. You will. He will do it. I know because he did it in me. 
And I don't tell you to boast in me. He did it. I couldn't. I boast in Christ. He is worthy of all praise. For he made the way for one as broken and hardened and scar-covered as me to be totally (laughs) healed. Glory to God. It's scary to give up who you were. What are you going to do now? Who will you be if you're not drinking or drugging or whatever else you're doing to try to cover the pain? Try to anesthetize yourself. Uh, It's my only identity. I'm a wounded person. Or I'm a wounded person with MS. Now he says, I'll give you your true identity, the one you were meant to have, to be a child of mine, fully healed inside and out. Glory to God. Now, if that isn't good news to the wounded club, I don't know what is. I remember, I was a member. I was a member. I'm not just speaking something theological here. I'm speaking what really and truly happened in me. Because this word is true. Hallelujah. Can you grab onto it? But you see, the key for you to be able to grab onto it is from Psalm 51. So go back there. Because most of the time, I want to tell you, not all of the time, but most of the time, our wounds are partly self-inflicted. When I was about to marry Tim, On that night when we were at the rehearsal, the day before the wedding, I ran out of the church into a cemetery crying, this is not right, this is not right, this is not right. Everybody told me I had the wedding jitters. But God was trying to speak to me that what I was about to do was very self-destructive because I was going to marry a man who would abuse me in every way. My goodness. But I will tell you what, and this is what has to precede your healing just like it had to precede mine. Remember I told you I had to go to the Lord and say, take this unforgiveness from me. That required me to be humble before the Lord, knowing I can't do it, and knowing it's there, and it stands between me and him. And contrite, that is, low. And I'm not saying thinking you're nothing. I'm saying understand who you're standing before to ask for healing. Because he is much greater than us. So we must come to him humbly, knowing we can't fix what's wrong, but that he is a healer of hearts, just as did King David when he was confronted by a prophet who said, you have done evil before the Lord. So he said, Ten, create for me a clean heart, a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. Here is what David learned through his experience of sinning against God. 
Verse 16, for you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. He doesn't want an outward act. Oh, here, I'll placate God with this. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God, this is what pleases him, are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. If you come to him in your brokenness, humbly and low, as I did on that night when I said, this stands between you and me, Lord, and I want to know you. He will heal you fully, whether it be your heart or your heart and your body. I tell you the truth, because he has done it in me. He has shown me so many lately that are shattered in so many ways. Some years ago, some years ago, and he has used me to bring healing. And I pray he uses me today to bring healing because I know what it's like to be you. I know what it's like. And I know the healer <laughs> of hearts. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for what you did in me, that you made it a testimony so that I could say this word is true. I pray, Jesus, that your church would hear because there are people that believe in you and never stayed to get the full healing. And I pray that, Jesus, you would reach out to all those around me who have shattered hearts. Holy Spirit, send this forth in your power. In Jesus' name, amen.